Brand factorization is an essential concept in mathematics and computer science. And there are several methods to find the prime factors of the number. Understanding these methods can help you solve problems more efficiently and improve your mathematical skills. In this video, we will discuss the concept of prime factorization. Now let's talk about what prime factorization is and how to find the prime factors of any number. Before we start, we want you to watch our previous video on probability test. In that video, we covered concepts such as prime numbers and how to find it optimal, which will be helpful in understanding today's video. Prime factorization is the process of breaking down a composite number into its prime factors, which are prime numbers that can be multiplied together to obtain the original composite number. And every number is product of its prime factor. For example, the prime factorization of 24 is 2 cross 2 cross 2 cross 3, which is product of 2 raised to the power 3 and 3. The easiest way to do this is by dividing the number by a smallest prime number that divides it evenly. We repeat this process until we get the quotient is 1. For example, let's find the prime factorization of number 120. We start by dividing the number by the smallest prime number, which is 2. We get 60. 60 is divisible by 2, so we continue dividing by 2 until we can no longer divide by 2. We get 30 and now 15. Now, we cannot divide 15 by 2 anymore, but we can divide it by the next smallest number, which is 3. Now, we get 5, but 5 cannot be divisible by 3. Then, we try for the next number, which is 4, but 5 can't be divided by 4 because 4 is not prime. I am saying this because any numbers, a small divisor except one is prime numbers. And here, we divide every time by a small divisor or you can call it by a small prime factor. 4 120 it's 2, 4 60 it's 2, 4 30 it's 2, 4 15 it's 3 which all are the prime number. Therefore for 5 it's a smallest divisor or you can call it as pf, a smallest prime factor is 5. Now all factors are prime number and we cannot divide any of them further. Therefore we have found the prime factorization of 120. This means that 120 can be expressed as product of 2 raised to the power 3, 3 and 5. There are other ways to, to find prime factorization like using factor tree method but in general the prime factorization of a number is unique which means that no matter how you choose to factorize a number we will always end up with the same set of prime factors. Now let's write code for this. Here we start by dividing from a small prime number 2 and continue dividing by 2 until we can no longer divide by 2 and 2 is the divisor so I need to run a loop while n modulo divisor double equal 0 and each step we decrease the value of n into n by divisor also need to print divisor which is our desired prime factors and here the divisor value is not constant. It varies from 2 to 3, 5. You can see it. So, need to run one outer loop. Also from 2 to do 10 times. Here you may confuse that. Why run till 2 10 times only? In the probability test video, we have seen that in pair factorization of any number n with pair factors of a and b, the simultaneously maximum value of a and b for which we are going to check for its primary test is still root n means if any composite number has to be divided then it will be divided to the root n here I am not considering it for prime number that's why we run the outer loop till root n times 1 now let's write C++ code for this I run this code and check for number 24. Here output we get is 2, 2, 2. But expected output should be 2, 2, 2 and 3. Means this code is not giving me the correct output. Let's figure it out. In this approach, we start dividing from the small divisor and each time we replace n into n by divisor and continue this for the next divisor until n becomes 1 and for n we check its divisibility 
till root n only. But from this logic, this 5 is not printed. Why? Because square root of 5 is 2 and till 2, 5 is not divisible. That's why 5 value is not printed and 5 is only divisible by 5. Let us take one another example where same situation occurred. n equal to 46. Here you can see that 23 is not divisible by any number till under root of 23. It's only divisible by 23. And if this type of problem occur, then your code will not generate the correct output. But before moving to the solution, you should know one concept. For composite number, at least one factor always lies under root n. And if none of the factor lies till root n, then number is definitely a prime number. So after running the root n time loop, is there any value left? If there is any value greater than one left, then the prime number is left. So simply print the value. So we need to take care of one extra step. If n is greater than 1, then simply print the value of 1. What about time complexity in this case? It's big O of root n. These algorithm works fine for single values, but it has some limit where this code failed to execute in CPU. When you have multiple queries, let's understand through example. You are given an array of two positive integers and for each of them determine its prime factor. Here the input constants is also given and you should print all prime factors for every element of them. And here you can see for input values, or value is also given. And time limit per test case is only 2 seconds. If you are going to solve using the previous approach, so the total time complexity will be q into root n. Here the input constants are given. Suppose worst case scenario for input constants. So the total time complexity in this case will be 10 to the power 9 iteration, which will take approx 10 seconds. But in this problem, you don't allow to take this much of time. So definitely we need to find an optimized approach. And here the sieve of Ada Tosthenes methods come into rescue. Previously we already discussed the sieve of Ada Tosthenes algorithm. Go and watch first. In this video, we will walk through how SIEV helps in optimization for finding prime factorization. SIEV is basically used for pre-computation. In the original SIEV video, we pre-compute all prime number till n. You need to recall all concepts. In the previous step, we start dividing the number by the smallest prime factor that divides it evenly. We repeat this process until we get the quotient is 1. And for finding prime factorization for Q query, each time we repeat this all process to find its prime factor. And, and the primary concept behind using the seal is storing the smallest prime factor of number. Then find the prime factors of a given number by dividing the number by the smallest prime number recursively until the number becomes 1. Now the question is how we are going to store SPF for every number till n. Let us understand through a small number 30. Firstly, I write down all the number from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 till 30. But storing into computer's memory, we need to have some data structure. So in this example, we will take a integer array. In second step, I store all values with index value. Now in the third step, take the first prime number and store all its multiple to its SPL value. First prime number start from 2, so we will store all the multiple of 2 as 2 because 2 is a small prime factor for all the multiples of 2. Now when you move forward, take another number which is equivalent to its index value. Then follow the same as previous step 3 with that number. Next number is 3, now store all its multiple to the 3. Multiple of 3 is 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27 and 30. And now the next next index number is 4, but value at index is not 4 because its SPF value is already stored. So I skip this. Next number is 5, so I store all multiple of 5 to the SPF 5. Next index is 7, value at index is 7, so now I store all its multiple to SPF 7. So we repeat this process till 30. 
and at the end we end up with all indexes corresponding to its SPF value. Now our sieve is ready with its SPF value. Next step is to find the prime factors of a given number by dividing the number by the SPF recursively until the number becomes 1 and so 430 its SPF is 2 divided 415 its SPF is 3 now 45 its SPF is 5 and now the number becomes 1 so our prime factorization is 2 cross 3 cross 5 now let's implement this into code for a storing SPF create integer array and size must be n plus 1 such that its index represent number for the outer loop it will run from 2 to root n then check if the array at index values equivalent to its index or not if yes then the inner loop will go for all the multiple and make it its SPF value and now print all prime factorization let us implement this into C++ code. Let's declare variables and initialize with for all the constants value. In this problem, our constant limit is 10 raised to the power 6. So after that, need to declare the integer error for a storing SPF and size should, should be n plus 1. But we will declare it global instead of local because then you will get to see segmentation error. I would not prefer to take array size uh, more than 10 raised to the power 5 in local and it mostly depends on your compiler. Maybe it will run in your local machine but there uh, might be problems with online coding platform. Now call our C function. After that write code for our query. And now let us print our prime factors. And also we need to declare our C function. So these things we already discussed in the C of error cost in each lecture. So our code is giving me the correct output. Now we analyze its time complexity. It is taking n log of log n. Time to do this pre-computation. And this is a single time pre-computation. After that we find all prime factorizations for multiple queries in only log n time complexity. I am not suggesting this to find prime factorization for single value rather it would be much beneficial if you have queries. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.